up guys, BD Wiz, OldSchoolStereo.com. Today we're going to look at a transportable system that fits in a suitcase. Before we do that, let's go back to the history of Cambridge Soundworks. The person who started Cambridge Soundworks, Henry Close. He was born in 1929, Cambridge, Massachusetts. He was an entrepreneur, hi-fi guy, well known in the audio industry. Him and another guy got together and started Acoustic Research. The AR-1 was a game changer in the industry back then, the first acoustic suspension speaker. And also the KLH tabletop radio, the Model 8, was a hi-fi marvel at the time. Back in 1962, KLH introduced the Model 11 transportable record player system, which included the Garrard AT6 four-speed record changer. It came in an enclosure, kind of like a suitcase. It would fit under a jet airliner seat, cost 199 US dollars in 1962, which is equivalent to almost 1600 today. It used a transistor-based amplifier as opposed to tube-based, which most uh, hi-fi equipment used back in the day. You can see the way the speakers detached from the system. It came with all the wiring and everything that was needed. So let's uh, get a demo of this one. Let's take the top off and we'll put a record on and hit play and let's see what it sounds like. In the late 1960s, KLH was sold to the Singer Corporation, as you know them, for making sewing machines. They continued to make these transportable systems for a while, a little different in design. Even JCPenney and some of the other companies copied this design since it was so popular. And even today, you can get a Crosley system that looks very similar to the portable systems from back in the 60s. In 1988, Cambridge Soundworks was formed, and after the success of the Ensemble speaker system, they introduced the Model 11 transportable component system, which again looked like the original KLH Model 11 from back in the day. Now the difference with this one is it had a subwoofer built in and they called the case that enclosed it the base case. You can see all of the foam on the inside. There's a six and a half inch subwoofer. And once all the other components were removed, the entire enclosure act like a subwoofer enclosure. Also included was a Model 11 three channel amplifier in addition to satellite speakers, wiring and everything that was needed for this transportable system. The brain of the system was a Model 11 amplifier. It had source adjustments, volume controls, balance, bass, and treble, in addition to mono and stereo switches. On the back, you can see the CD inputs, tape inputs, aux inputs, etc. And here are the speaker connections as well. Now, what's really interesting is how the satellite connections hooked up. They use these really odd spade connectors and they didn't stay in very well. I'm going to show a demo here. When you plug it in, it was not very tight. So I'm not real sure about this design. It does work, but just not the best design I've ever seen. So fast forward a few years forward to 1996, Cambridge Soundworks introduced the Model 12 transportable system. And if you guys were into hi-fi or stereos back in the day, you probably knew this catalog because everybody got them. And here is the Model 12 transportable system. You can see the price, $799. That's big money back in the 90s. No, I couldn't afford it. And here's a comparison between the Model 11 and the Model 12. Notice how much smaller the Model 12 is, much more compact, and it's in more of a Pelican case than the Model 11, which was in more of a suitcase style enclosure. Here you can see the difference in the sizes, 19 and a half inches versus 17 inches for the width, and the height, 16 and a half versus 11 inches. The only dimension the Model 11 is smaller is the thickness, 6.25 inches versus 7 inches for the Model 12. Alright, let's take a look inside of the Model 12. You can see this really nice case, it's a Pelican style case. It has this seal that goes all the way around. It helps keep air inside when the subwoofer is playing, which is good. Comes with a 12 volt adapter, RCA wires, and here is the power supply. It's external, has to be plugged into the amplifier outside of the unit. 
and speaker cable, all you need for all the speakers. And here's the brain of the system, integrated amplifier. It has RCA inputs, volume controls, and all that. The satellite speakers, which come with wall mounts, and about 10 feet of speaker wire, so you can nicely space the front speakers if you'd like. Here's a picture of all the components. The Model 12, they say you can fit a portable CD player inside, but I'm not sure where. Here is the base case. You can see the subwoofer there at the bottom. It has a lot of foam and some rigid insulation on the inside. Here is the six and a half inch subwoofer, which has a nice metal grill on the back to protect it. It's 165 millimeters for those of you outside the US. It has the spring-loaded positive and negative speaker connections there on the side. And we measured the resistance and got 3.7 ohms. Next up, we'll pull out the satellite speakers and check those out. Very nice looking little satellite speakers with the wall mounts on the back. You can see these are exact of the new ensemble speakers and they're actually, that's what they are. The new ensemble threes that I'm showing here. And I pulled the grill off of this one so you could see the mid-range is spec as a three and a half inch and the tweeter 0.75 inch, but actual cone diameter is about two and a half for the mid-range. We measured the resistance and got about four ohms. The nominal impedance is rated at eight ohms. If you don't know the difference, do a Google search. Now we'll take a look at the integrated amplifier of the system. It includes a three-way source selector, a volume control, source or tape switch, stereo or mono switch, quarter inch headphone jack, balance for left and right, bass control, treble control, power button, and a power LED. On the back of the unit, we have satellite connections for speaker outs. We have the 12 to 14 volt DC input. We have the bass subwoofer output, as well as a bass level, a nine volt DC out, tape in, tape out, and three auxiliary inputs, including a CD in. You guys who watch my channel know how crazy I am about amplifiers, so of course we have to take the screws out, check out and see what's inside. There are five screws holding the case on, and then we can pry the top off and we can check the guts, see what it's all about. Here we go. You can see not a whole lot going on there, just one single big capacitor, and then it looks like a single-sided circuit board, and then the heat sink is on the far right, and then we'll look a little closer at the capacitor. It's 25 volt, 10,000 microfarad. And then we'll take a look at the chips. We have a TDA 7350. That's by ST Corporation, rated 22 watts by one at four ohms, 10% THD. The other chip for the front channels is kind of hidden here. It's hard to see, but it's by Sanyo. It's the LA4700, rated at six watts times two at four ohms. 10% THD. The included external power brick is 120 volt input and outputs 13.5 volt 2.1 amp, which should give us around 28.35 watts when we use this. So let's get it all hooked up, all the speaker wires connected, plugged into the dyno, and let's check out each channel individually and see how it does. Oh yeah, anytime you hook up anything with a barrel connector, make sure you plug it into the wall last. You big dummy! Also, be very careful when you hook up this amplifier not to use the 9 volt DC out to plug your power supply into will cause big problems. All right, let's fire up the amp dyno. Put this little integrated amp on there and let's see what kind of power we get. Also, to ensure all the channels were loaded down properly, I use this external resistor bank that I made a while back. Check the video description. I'll have a link to the video where I made this so you guys can make one if you're interested. So first up, we're gonna try the front channels. We have the rear channel hooked into the external resistor bank, the front channel is hooked into the dyno. Eight ohms, one kilohertz, up to 1% THD. We're rated six watts by two. We get six watts by two, big surprise, right? And again, we had the subwoofer channel hooked up to the four ohm load of the external resistor bank. We decided to try the front channels at four ohms, one kilohertz, 1% THD. And got a little bit more. We got eight watts on one channel, nine watts on the other. So yeah, not big power here, friends. All right, now we have the front channels hooked up to the external resistor bank and the sub channel hooked into the amp dyno. So we're gonna run it at 
four ohms. We're gonna do the certified test first, which takes us to 1% THD. 40 hertz was our test tone signal. And the chip itself is rated at 22 watts, but the amp itself doesn't have a real rating. So we just, you know, get, went by the chip rating, 22 watts by one. We got 14 watts. So then we decided to go up to clipping, which is gonna be, you know, closer to that 10% THD the chip is rated at. And you can see we still didn't quite get there. We got 15 watts. Again, we, the chip was rated 22, but the amp itself didn't say how much it would do based on the power supply, and it could have been limited by the power supply. All right, you just saw the test, but a lot of times people want to see the results in writing. So here you have the front channels, 6 plus 6 watts at 8 ohms, or 8 plus 9 watts at 4 ohms. The sub-channel measured at 40 hertz, 15 watts at 4 ohms, 1% THD, or 16 watts at 4 ohms at clipping. All right, now we'll do a sound demo, but first I want to show you what a pain it was to hook everything up. Now, some people think this is fun, and it kind of is fun for those of us who like to tinker. But honestly, you know, for something that you're traveling with, that you're setting up, taking it apart, all that stuff, it's a bit of a pain. There's a lot of different components here. You have to run the speaker wires, plug them to the amplifier, you know, run the subwoofer to a different place. But um, yeah, it has its benefits and drawbacks. You get to place the subwoofer wherever it sounds best. So that's pretty cool, and you can separate the front channels out to give you better sound stage. So anyway, let's uh, get it all plugged up here and then we'll uh, give it a sound test, see what it sounds like. Please note, this was not set up optimally for sound quality. We had hardwood floors and a lot of reflections. But anyway, you get the idea. All right, there you have it, my review and test of the Cambridge Soundworks Model 12 transportable system. I really like this setup and liked it so much. In fact, I bought a few of them just in case a lot of you guys like this video and the prices start going up. But anyway, you know, it's a bit of a pain to set up. Uh, I am gonna have a comparison to the Bose Acoustic Wave Machine if you stay tuned to after the credits, because you guys know I always give you some extra credit after the credits. Please give this video a thumbs up. Subscribe if you like this kind of content. I appreciate you guys watching and commenting and all your support. Until next time, Big D Wiz, I'm out of here. All right guys, so just for fun, I decided to hook up both of these, the Bose Acoustic Wave Machine and the Cambridge Soundworks Model 12 a little sound demo for you guys. First thing you'll notice is that the Bose is so much easier to set up. Got this nice carry bag with it. Just unzip it, take it out, hook up the connections for power, and then hook in the RCAs and that's it. I actually had a chance to take either one of these this summer on vacation. I decided to take the Bose just because it was easier to connect and it sounds great. So let you guys hear both of these and let me know which one do you like better. Take a listen.